Welcome back. We are in Concord on our way to the church to check the board for additional quests. This is part of Sim Settlements 2. We have some missing caravaniers. Caravaniers. How do you say that? Is that how you say that? I don't even know. Caravaniers. No, it'd be caravaniers. <laughs> but it sounds to me like you're saying caravan ears. <laughs> like all of the ears associated with a caravan. <laughs> oh, that's funny. We are exploring Concord. Here is the gentleman right here. <clears throat> Excuse me, you there. Might I trouble you for a moment of your time? Of course. What's up? Now, I hate to ask a stranger for this, but I need a bit of a hand tracking down a few of my workers. You see, now me and my caravan moseyed on into the area a few days back now. Come up from Virginia in the wreckage of the late Great Virginia Caravan Company. But the death of my hard work, hopes, and the very foundation of myself as a man is neither here nor there. Right now, there's other things to worry about. Unfortunate to say, but most of my people didn't make it down the road. Bobby over here is the only one besides myself yet unmaimed by the Commonwealth. I know at least two of my folks made it into the local area, but we got separated before Concord. If you could find them for me, I'd be mighty grateful. Don't worry. I can help. Tell me what happened. Well, I thank you kindly. Not a lot of folks willing to help others out in these times. I won't forget this. Look, there's two of them. The first one got grabbed by a group of raiders near some big stone fortress we passed by. You'll probably need to crack a few heads to get them back. The second one got lost up by Natick. Old world town. Place is overrun with undesirables. If you can find them alive, then just tell them to meet me here in Concord. If you find them dead, I'd like you to bring me something back. Something I might be able to send their family later down the road. Alright. I'll find them. I can't thank you enough, stranger. And I won't forget this. That is really interesting. I don't know what it is about the voice of Brannigan that seems, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it seems really out of place. Like, huh? Hey there. Aren't you supposed to be doing something for Brannigan? <laughs> I love that they have their own little personalities. All of them. They're pretty funny. Yeah, I've already been through here. I think I've already been through most of it. But we did need that quest. Well, we don't need it, but I mean, why not? I want to do all the quests, you know, eventually. It'll take a very long time, but I would like to. Go through them all. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I've been through all here too. I'm pretty sure I already looked through all of Concord and I just don't remember. Yep. Hey, Con Codsworth! <laughs> Move, will ya? Sim Settlements 2 adds so much, so much. Like, it's hard for me to even find a way to explain just how much it adds to the game. Um, and it's not just in the way of building. 
it's in the way of story and and additional uh, major characters and additional major plot lines and it's just You know, I mean, Fallout 4 is a great game on its own, but Sim Settlements 2 just makes it so much better. Mm -mm -mm. Bum -bum Trying to see if there's anything I've missed. Anything at all. And I've been looking to see if I can get that random encounter with the neighbor ghouls. Well, the neighbors that have become ghouls. I should say, it's not Fine that the ghouls are neighbors. Well, technically, I mean, if the they're located in around Concord, they are, right? Kind of. Long cords with we are on an adventure. An adventure in Concord. Mm -hmm -hmm. Concord will change though. Wait and see. Did I do the speakeasy? I'm sure I did, didn't I? I don't know. Let's find out. I didn't. I didn't. Ooh. So I didn't do Concord entirely. Okay, let's do it. Probably did it on the ASMR channel where I'm playing it. That's it. No, we won't, Codsworth. We got that little skeleton there. Mm, ba -dum -ba. What's over here? Beer bottles, cigars, and three skeletons all sitting around. Looks like they were having a drink. Go to the basement. Oh, that's so creepy. That's a mod. Um, it's a mod to do with the ghouls, as you can tell. And it adds more variety. I forget what it's called, but it's good. At some point, I'll put together a list of the mods that I use. They were doing down here. Whatever it was, it doesn't look right. Mm. All right, upstairs. And in here. In the first door to our left. Get it open. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. The horror. There we go. Sweet. Huh? Oh my. Sorry, Lilith. And Samuel. So 
Sorry, kids. Take issue with being uh, eaten and gnawed upon. Powerful 10 millimeter. This guy was trying. I don't know what he was doing, actually. He's in the corner. He could have been trying to defend himself from the kids. Or. Perhaps he was already a skeleton in there when the kids got put in there, got trapped in there. Nice. <laughs> I could use one of those robots. As could every household. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Mother's desperation. Since leaving home, I still can't decide what to do. I thought Edgar's death was the worst tragedy that could ever happen to our family. Lilith and Samuel are so young. I can't lose them. Our house wasn't safe anymore. Those things got inside. Lily and Sam were both bitten. I managed to use Edgar's shotgun to kill the beasts. Before they did any real damage, Lily got it the worst. I cleaned and patched their wounds, but both kids came down with a fever almost instantly. I knew of a safer place. The door in our home was hanging off its hinges. We couldn't stay. Maybe if Edgar was here to fix it. We're at the Concord Speakeasy now. I knew about it from when Edgar worked here. I've taken the kids up. To one of the rooms and searched through the place. I found a few medical supplies and useful tools. Looking at the kids' wounds, I applied some antibacterial liquid and gave them more antibiotics I got, brought from home. Lily is getting worse. Both their bites look infected. I need to find a doctor, but I don't like my chances. I nailed down the windows that I could. that I could reach, and I found a reserve key in the reception. The place wasn't even locked when we arrived. I went out to look for help and found some water and a few things. I heard howls not far from me. It's dangerous outside. Both kids refuse to drink or eat. Their eyes are becoming milky white. My babies. Why couldn't it have been me? I tried again to give the kids water and food. Sam wildly lashed out and tried to bite me. I pushed him back and ran from the room, slamming the door and locking it behind me. Both kids beat on the door like animals. There has to be a cure for this. I won't accept that my babies are gone. It's clear to me what they want to eat, what the others eat. I need to feed them. It took me a while, but I used the hammer I found and ripped a few boards from the wall shared by the room I'm staying in and the one I have locked my babies in. They can see me now, but it sends them into a rage. I can't calm them down anymore. They howl from hunger and bite each other. Watching this breaks my heart. I decided I know what needs to be done to keep them alive long enough for a cure to be found. They must eat. 
I crept into the street and took one of their bodies, dragging it back inside. The face was already half-eaten, but from the long curly hair and distinctive pearl necklace, I could recognize it was Mrs. Wilson. I dragged her body into the kitchen and took a carving knife in my hand. I started several times to try to cut into her, but my hands trembled and faltered. Then I heard their screams upstairs. I closed my eyes and took off her arm. It was much harder than I thought. The knife was not the best tool for this job. While hacking at the bone, I heard voices in the corridor. I took the shotgun and went to check, but all the doors were still closed. Something is wrong here. Maybe it's just me. I took Virginia Wilson's arm upstairs and noticed it still wore her wedding ring. It felt cold. I threw it through the hole in the wall, and my babies rushed to it like ravenous piranhas. I wanted to be sick. Once they had eaten, though, they seemed to become calm. I stayed a while with them and told them tales I remember from books we'd read before bedtime. Lily's favorite one was about a beautiful princess. I read it to her often. She's like her. Even with skin peeling away, she'll always be my beautiful girl. I cut off another part of the body and dropped it through the wall. It seems their hunger is insatiable. My skin is changing, falling off in patches. It burns, but I feel okay so far. God, I hope I don't start to change too. Who will feed the children if I lose my mind like they have? There was a locked door under the stairwell, and I found the key for it today, hidden in a box under the bar. It's a cellar. I found an operating table and medical instruments, but why is that stuff down there? Edgar worked here for years. What were they doing here? I hope this stuff was brought here after the bombs, but... I can see trash piled up around the base of the table, indicating it's been here a long time. I'm confused. I've noticed other strange things within this place, too. If I had another choice, I wouldn't stay here. Did I even really know my husband? I feel like I don't even know myself anymore. In any case, I guess this is exactly... what I need to continue my grim task. God, I hope help comes soon. None of this seems real. Today, while out searching, I came across Mayor Thompson trying to drag a body from the street. Was he feeding somebody, too? His dirty suit hung from his thin body, his cheekbones sunken in and skeletal. His skin looked blistered and burnt. Like mine. I asked him for help or if he had heard anything about a cure for the infected or any military safe zones, anything. But the bastard just dropped the body he was dragging and walked away without even acknowledging me. I could see in his eyes he was already gone. I wondered, maybe I could use them to feed my babies. The thought sickened me. I decided not to write in a while. The tasks I have to endure don't much put me in the mood for writing about it. I've been out looking for survivors every day, hoping on news, of a cure, hoping for any news. Radio stations are still not broadcasting anything. I've cleared most of the bodies from the streets surrounding the speakeasy. At night I hear voices from within the building. But each time I check, I find no one. I haven't slept properly in weeks. Day 24, I think. A few days ago, I seen a man from the window in the street looking through trash cans for food. He looked harmless, though. 
I think he might have been an addict. He seemed to be high on something, talking to himself. He's back out there now. Looks like he's heading in, this direction, but there are no more bodies left around. The turned ones have dragged off or consumed whatever was left. My babies haven't eaten in over a week. They grow restless. I need to get his trust and lure him to the speakeasy. If I kill him in the street, it'll be another body I have to drag in here. I need to save my shotgun shells for the turned ones. I'll take the kitchen knife, just in case. God forgive me for what I am about to do. Ooh, a steamer trunk. Lots of goodies. Yes? Are you interested in coming to work for me? I have a good spot you could set up shop. Sure. Send you to Sanctuary. Thanks. Uh, see you there in a day or two. Hmm. Lamb cool. Ice cold super yum. Balcony? Maybe? Look at that little circle in the corner there on the bottom right, just a working so hard for us. It's just down there working hard. Mm -mm -mm. Yep, balcony. My world now. Ain't no chance it'll end up different now. This shit is happening. I don't look as good as before. The shit burns, but <laughs> at least I ain't going to prison. I've never seen such chaos. This new world order. I like it. Normally I ain't the type to keep a damn journal, but something this big? Worth documenting for sure. Shit's about to get crazy. I met my first survivor. He looked like a shitty weak man, holding some dead whore in his arms. Ain't much left for her to do round here. He begged for help like a bitch, so I killed him. Sid Bailey, at your service. You're welcome. I've been high on Psycho for days. It's wearing off and I'm damn hungry. I'd kill for a steak. I'd even kill without one. Searching. Searching the streets, I met another poor soul. She seemed to be lost. So I comforted her and talked some shit to make her feel better. When she turned her back, I split her head with a stone. Where are the fucking police now? <laughs> when I saw her body lay and splayed out on the road, I felt the temptation. Not like all those other girls before. It was different. I wanted to fucking bite her and eat. So I did. This new freedom. To do whatever the fuck I want. It's amazing. No more eating out of trash cans. People taste just fine. <laughs> Today I went back to the place where I hit that chick. But she wasn't there no more. Only thing left was a trail of blood leading towards some buildings. Damn, she tasted good. I bet even better cooked. I don't think them infected care much. For dragging bodies into buildings before they eat. But I don't know. Most likely I ain't alone. Someone else must have found out how good people taste too. 
better than starving for sure. I'm going to kill that motherfucker who stole my dinner. And if it ain't one of them infected types, then I'm going to cook them up and eat them. I'll follow the blood trail. Let's see who's stronger. Well, turns out I was the stronger one. Some bitch came out the front door as I got close and invited me inside. When she turned away, I took her by the throat. Tried to be quiet in case others were inside, but... The bitch pulled a knife and managed to cut my leg before she went limp. The cut ain't too bad. Tied a bit of a rag round it. It'll stop bleeding soon. I checked around inside. Seems empty, of humans anyway. Seems she got a couple of those infected ones locked in a room upstairs. I can hear them through the door. What the fuck was this bitch up to? Fuck it, they can stay there. Make good guard dogs, I guess. There's a few other locked doors I can't get into, but one room is vacant for rent. Huh. Has a nice old style cast iron. Bathtub. I bet it would make an excellent stew pot if I build a fire under it. Time to drag that bitch in here. But first, I'm gonna have a hit of Psycho. Cause why not, right? <laughs> Any more I come across, this'll be the place I bring them. Oop, more backpack. Let's see. Burn, burn. When it's out, get us a drink. What on earth is going on here with the machetes and the plunger? <laughs> That's a uh, yeah. Day tripper and a skull in the toilet. He put her head in the toilet, of all places. Hey, Mom, what's mine is yours, Mom. What's mine is yours, and what's yours is mine, and what's mine is mine. Gotta get Codsworth to carry some of this. I've got too much going on. I can't carry it all. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh. I want to try and give Codsworth as much of it as I can so that I have more room so I can deal with it easier. Mm. Bot tech lunch box. Alright. And that's silver locket in a casual outfit. I'm collecting outfits. no more. That's it for the speakeasy. We have found the entire thing. The entire story. That's to be found in here anyway. In the speakeasy in Concord. 
do a quick save. Um, where to now? I get turned around so easy. <laughs> I'm just like, I get distracted for a minute and I forget. And I'm like, oh no, where have I gone? Where have I not gone? What have I done? What have I not done? What is happening in my life? Very empty in here. Upstairs. Got a drink. Surely. The day the bombs fell. Oh my goodness. I'm thirsty. I apologize. That was a big swallow. All right, every place has its own story. Every human has his own past. My name is Richard Thompson. I was the mayor of Concord. The day the bombs fell was a national tragedy that touched every person. Mothers lost their sons. Children lost their parents. I'm looking from the window out over my town at what's left of it. People I thought I knew well. People I respected now wander the town mindlessly in a state of living death. They fight each other for rotting corpses in the street, eating them like wild animals. I've tried to sneak out and bury some of the bodies when it's quiet, but it's too dangerous. Twice I've been caught off guard. They're fast. My respects to the dead is not worth my own life. I have to let them rot and be eaten before my eyes. I don't want to change like them. My lovely wife, my Emily, she died in my arms. I've made a small grave in our garden under the roses. She used to love them so much. I hope she's at peace now. I never believed in God, but now I wonder if heaven exists. If I will ever again meet the people I love, in a better place, better than here. When the bottle of whiskey on my bedroom table runs dry, I'll take this revolver gifted to me by my father and put down the photo of Emily I've been staring at for hours through tears in my eyes. I'll say goodnight to this world of despair and hope to see my Emily again. If any survivor finds this note, I'm asking you for something. Spend a while to think about the people of Concord who lost their lives. William and Diane Taylor and their children, Joseph and Sally. Virginia Wilson, daughter Sophie, and son Samuel. Marcus and Olivia Jones. Henry Martinez. John and Ann Coleman with son Edgar and my Emily Thompson. Signed, Richard Thompson, October 30th, 2077. Concord. If you meant to leave that rubbish where you found it. Wow. Very, very sad. Imagine surviving the bomb just to like, you know, realize and watch as everything you love is taken. It would feel pretty hopeless. The workhouse. Let's go into the workhouse and find out what we can see. Never will you know until you look. You don't know until you know. You don't look until you look. Yes, that's not obvious, Sherlock. All right. Uh, 
Collinsworth. <laughs> My running around is confusing him, so he's just kind of like motoring around in a circle. He's like, I don't know what to do. Let's travel over here. Nothing there. And in here, nothing. Mm-hmm. Upstairs. Tick tock. I hear a robot. Must be up another floor. Hmm. Hmm. No way across there. Must have to come at it from above. Ooh. What's going on here? What are these skeletons up to? What are they doing? Are they fighting? Is he trying to shield her from, or him from the blast? Are they trying to shield, I don't know. Holding on for dear life, who knows? Could be many things. Yes. But there's goodies in the safe. Hmm. Let's see. Go across here. And then we can drop down. And get all this. Yay! Healing powder. Okay. We'll have to drop down and then go back up. There we go. Hmm. Up, up, and up. Let's find the robot. Beep, beep, boop, boop. Beep, beep. Ooh. Protect you sound like and R2D2. Serve. Protect and serve. Protect and serve. It's a Protectron. Hey, I'll recruit you. Through my recruitable settlers mod. And I will send you to Sanctuary. We'll be friends. You'll be my robot friend. Protect and serve. Yeah, you're doing good. Good job. Just keep going, little robot. Doing good. I'll just hop down here. You know, the ghouls must have moved on from Concord, for the most part, because you don't see any, but you hear about them in the letters. And so my thoughts are that they moved on because, right, there was nothing to eat here. Project and that's why and when you serve. come to Concord, it's not like covered in ghouls. And if there was any stragglers, then the raiders probably took care of them. Mm -mm -mm. I wonder. I wonder. What else will I find? I'm just looking around. Everywhere. Everywhere. Mm. I'm having issues with my webcam. It is problematic. All right. Wow! Lick anything good? There was a raider here. And a safe. Hey, we found a safe. It's a novice level safe. 
Got it. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Uh. Uh. Mm, I forgot what I was doing. Oh yeah, I was just running around. And looting. And exploring Concord. Stash. Okay. Chem box. Parking beans. Bobby pins in the fridge. Huh. Well, I never. Who are you all? Y'all friendly? No, you're not friendly. You're raiders. Come and get me. Let me introduce you to my little friend. Fish, my little friend. My little friend is a shotgun. I'll take that. Oop. Me. Mm. Do I want it? Uh, I'm so over encumbered. I want everything. I just don't know if I can carry everything. Uh, hey. Cutsworth. I need you to carry more things for me. Okay? I know. I'm sorry that I'm like this. But... I have... Things that need carry, you see, and I'm not that strong, and I'm not wearing power armor, and I can only carry so much, and I, my eyes are bigger than my strength to carry. You understand what's going on here? I want everything. Absolutely everything. That I see. But I can't get everything that I see. So I need your help. Alright. My like me. Now I can cook. Let's do some cooking. Uh, okay, what can we make? What do we have the stuff for? Um, Old World Gourmet. Coastal Egg Salad. Fungus puree. Ooh, fungus puree. I have lots of fungus. I have many fungi. Level up. Fungi. <laughs> it sounds like he's saying fun guy, if you think about it, right? So, like, a fun guy. Fun guy. Grilled rad roach, because that's what you do with a giant cockroach, right? Do you do? I guess. I guess. Mac and mall. <laughs> Mac and mall. <laughs> mole rat chunk. Mushroom medley, ooh. Mutt chops. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Anything else? Uh, roasted marlot. Get me some chicken. What the 
then at least I'll have my chicken. Never stood a chance. Cool car. You know, I never understood why they didn't make drivable cars in Fallout 3 or Fallout 4 or New Vegas because you had them in Fallout 2. Like, yeah, it's only one, but it only makes sense that somebody would figure out a way to get one working. Like, you can't tell me nobody would. I mean, it just seems kind of silly that there's no, no one with a vehicle. Come on. It don't make a lot of sense, does it? And quite honestly, quite honestly, it would be fun. Like, I don't, I don't know. And you're traveling long distances, I mean... It just doesn't make sense. You could make it so that people have to go through quests to get it, but... You have fast travel, so, like, why they couldn't work a car into it is beyond me. I just don't know. Hey, Shams. There's probably a mod for that out there that I, I haven't seen yet. My power armor. Chemistry station. Here I can make many outfits. They're all mods. All mods. Except for the regular, you know. The regular chemistry stuff. Mmm. What I'm wearing right now is the X Institute Expeditionary Suit. I think it's pretty cool looking. I like it. Mm. Yeah. Let's try to be smarter. I need to be smarter. I need more brain cells, please. Um. I'll stop complaining when there's nothing left to complain about. Marcy. Oh, Marcy. Oh, Red Roach. This. Rocky. Or now. Just being all dramatic over there. You didn't even do anything, sir. It's just sir. looking to trade a little. Let's sure. dress him up. We interrupted his sleep and saved him from red roaches. Hey. Something you need, Mom? Right then. I think you're carrying it. So much weight. Alright, excuse me. I just sorry. want to trade a few things. I'm back. And I actually have what I needed to do what I wanted to do. Sure now. thing. carry more. Oh, sir. Oh, dear. Alright, well, let's quickly find you some clothes you can wear under all that. 
uh, give you a postman hat. There you go. And <laughs> I'll give you a vault one. Eleven jumpsuit. <laughs> there. <laughs> That'll work. Paris house. Yeah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. There, now. Now if it rains, it won't fall all over his head. Know what I'm saying? See if we got some clothes we can give to this this gentleman over here. Old man Jenkins. I'd like to trade some items. Old man Jenkins. Of course. Mm. I can give you a pistol and some rounds. Mm. What else can I give you? That's just a casual outfit. It's not really like armor. Mm. What do I have? Do I have anything to give you? I have a leather left leg. That's something. Oh dear. We need something you can wear under it. Mm. I'll give you a, a messenger bag and a backpack so you can carry more. What do I have? What do I have? Well, I'll give you what I can. I don't. I don't have any clothes for you. <gasps> All I have is a dress. Uh, sorry, old man Jenkins. I promise I'll get you something better soon. Okay? I'll get you something better soon as I can. For now, um, that'll have to do. Because <laughs> I can give you armor, but you're going to have to wear the dress under it. Find you when I have better clothes. <laughs> I swear I will. Just, just don't, don't run away from home, okay? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, okay. Lord help, and I'm still carrying too much. Oh, Maggie's already got stuff. Dog meat. You and your buddy over here, junkyard dog. Yeah, you all hanging out. Oh, you got a friend in here. Look, you got a settler friend. I just want to trade a few things. They're hanging out, being buddies. Just a casual outfit, but take it. You already have so much stuff. Give you some dynamite and blow some stuff up. I'm very close to having gotten rid of enough. Here, have a machete and a backpack. To carry everything because all you have is a messenger bag there you go and backpacks is from backpacks of the commonwealth it's another mod mm, 
There's some armor you didn't have. If I'm gonna get you up, better at least give you something. Something decent. There you go. That'll help you out, buddy. At least you're not wearing a dress. It could be worse, trust me. And that was a nice red dress, too. I'll have to get it back at some point. Excuse me, dog me. He's wearing me dress. He's wearing me dress. And now I can't wear it. Oh, I'm saying. Alright. I still have to get rid of so much stuff. Buttered wild corn. Why is that? You notice buttered is in parentheses. Why is that? What, what exactly is it buttered with? I don't want to know all of a sudden. It could be many things. Mm -hmm. Make room for the next thing that we do. Mm -hmm. Because goodness knows, I'll be picking up everything I see. I always do. Mm -hmm. Sequin dress. At least I didn't lose my sequin dress. Mm -hmm. I have too many guns. Mm -mm -mm. What else? I think that's it. Yeah, that's about it. Brannigan's bounty. there yet. Finch farm. Well, we do need to get there. Eastward ho. We are eastward bound in the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. When I was young, my father said, girl, you gonna go places. Little did he know. Little did he know. All right. Off we go. But somewhat carefully, because we are not very powerful yet. We are still... We are... We are... Diminutive in size. Hey, who are you? Lost track of how many blisters I got. Cena hey. Ann. If you ain't been up to see Grey Garden, you should go. I like your hair. Whole place is run by robots. Hey, you're cute. You look like Brotherhood of Steel. I like her hair. Very bright. Very bold. Hello. Go find who are your you? own fish and spot. Clear out. Hey there. Well that's not Don't nice. Don't scare the fish, asshole. Hmm. Well then. Let's go for a swim. Let's disturb the fishes. And go in here. Yeah. 